All right, so if both of you could just start with introducing yourselves, um, your organizations, and what your programs are working to accomplish. Sure, so I can go first. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Macias, and I am a Philanthropy Tank Year One uh, winner with my project Equal and Empowered. And then I went to college and I studied sociology and political science. And now I've come back um, to Palm Beach County and I work for a national organization called World Without Exploitation. And we work on education and policy focused on ending human trafficking and sexual exploitation. And I'm actually the founder or co-founder of our youth group, World Without Exploitation's Youth Coalition. And so we're a uh, national network of young people that works to end human trafficking and sexual exploitation through um, educa education, awareness, um, and some advocacy work as well. And so we have lots of new campaigns that are coming up um, and events that we do through Zoom. And I'm super excited to be speaking on this panel today. Awesome, thank you so much, Caitlin. We're happy to have you. Yeah. All right, I'll turn the table over to Ania now, if you wanna introduce your project. All right. My name is Ania McNair, and I'm founder and CEO of Not For Sale Youth. I am a current Morgan student studying social work, minor in music. And so Not For Sale really works to accomplish, you know, spreading more awareness on what human trafficking is, especially within the Black community. And I feel like youth really needs to know that. And it's a peer-to-peer -peer kind of support because the more information that they know, the more they can share with their peers, the more they can share with their family and their friends. And so since it happens a lot in our community, it's only right for them to know. And so that's what we work to accomplish and work with, you know, youth through a trauma-informed care approach through art, music, dance, technology, whatever, you know, fits best for them so they can feel comfortable for them to know it's a safe space. And so that's what we really aim to accomplish. I'm excited to have you both here. Um, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of commonalities in what you both are working on, uh, but also some differences as well. So I'm really looking forward to kind of getting more into the nitty gritty of everything. Um, I'd love to hear more um, first before we talk um, more about human trafficking awareness and do a deeper dive, um, a little bit more about your programs. So I'd like to hear um, both of your stories on what inspired you to start these programs. Um, if we can start with Caitlin. Sure, so I think what really inspired me was I've always been really passionate about um, gender-based justice. And um, my mentor actually through Philanthropy Tank, Julie Fisher Cummings, she gave me this really amazing book called Renting Lacey. And it's a story about, uh, it's a fictional story about domestic child sex trafficking. And I've honestly read that book like five times now. It's like really small, um, but it's really powerful because it tells the story of these young girls, they're like 11 and 12 and they're being trafficked um, around the country. And I think to me that really spoke to me because I was like, wow, I didn't know that this was actually happening um, in the US, first of all. And second of all, I didn't know it was happening a lot to young people. And so um, one of my other mentors always says like, find something that breaks your heart and then choose that as your passion. And that's what's really gonna move your work. And so. Um, I kind of decided that I, that was something that I was passionate about. And then I was able to get connected with World Without Exploitation and with other activists that are working on this. And I think from there, like my passion has actually grown. And I was actually in Vermont and New Hampshire um, this weekend testifying against two bills that would actually expand the sex trade. And I heard like the voices of survivors. And every time that I hear another story, I'm, I'm re-inspired by this work. And I'm also super inspired by other young people like Ania, and so many of the young people that I work with um, that are trying to make a difference. And so I think, you know, this work is hard and it takes a lot of effort every day, but it's really worth it. Awesome, I love that. Um, Ania, I'd love to hear more about your story. Okay, so what inspired me to uh, even deal and learn what human trafficking was. My mom worked for a department, both of my parents worked for a department of juvenile services. So they work with youth on the daily and the different cases that comes in, especially with our young females, but not discounting our young men as well, because it happens to them. And it just doesn't always get recorded all the time. So one day my mom told me about this case and I was like, so that really happens? I didn't know that really happens. And you know, Baltimore City, like, 
we literally see it all the time, but I didn't recognize that's what human trafficking was. And so it happens in our communities all the time and it goes under the rug and not talked about. And so I told her, I'm gonna learn more about that. So she found um, this seminar in Cecil County and it was a survivor story. And just like um, Miss Caitlin said, it drew me in. And so hearing her story and hearing how she survived that and knowing that there's life after trauma, that's what we talk about through not for sale youth. Yes, this happened to you, but that doesn't define you. It only creates your story for it to get bigger. It's out out its platform for you to know that there, you can do something bigger than that. And so that's what really inspired me, hearing her story and having my own story myself. No, I wasn't trafficked, but I was sexually assaulted. And there's a whole lot of young men and a whole lot of young females who have been through that. And um, that's why I'm passionate about the work that I do, because it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone in a blink of an eye. So bringing that awareness to our youth through not for sale is so important. Oh, I love that. I love how both of you were inspired by, or that you both have role models that really introduce you to this topic and that it's something that has really grown into a passion for both of you. Is there anything that um, either of you have been working on in particular as of recently, whether it's a, an event or a specific project or anything that you'd like to share? Sure. So um, I can share one of our new campaigns. Um, we're actually uh, finishing it up uh, until the launch next week. And so um, this is actually a collaboration with other organizations that work on child rights and also anti-human trafficking work. And it's called um, the hashtag uh, kids aren't criminals campaign. And it's in support of something called Sarah's law, which would actually um, help child victims of trauma, abuse, um, and Actually, um, because of shot and killed her trafficker at the age of 16 um, when she was a minor, and she was actually sentenced to life in prison uh, without parole. And we just believe that, you know, if you've been through trauma, um, trafficking, be held to the same standard as someone who hasn't, um, just because of the way that trauma impacts and what we know um, about well. So this is going to launch a week of action with lots of events social media like tweet storms um, and IG lives as well with experts and so we're really excited to sort of kick off this campaign. Awesome thank you so much Caitlin. Um, it actually does look like the network bandwidth on your end is um, is lagging a little bit. Um, I don't know if you want to uh, check on that really quick and I just I can just pause the recording. So. So I had a recent event on January the 8th, and it was a huge success. We had guest speakers from University of Maryland School of Social Work. We also had a survivor story who came and shared her experience and how she expressed that there's life after trauma. We also had mentally wealthy because mental health is so important, and we had to uh, talk about and bring more awareness, just not on human trafficking, but mental health, because that plays a big part as well. We also had Black Mental Health Alliance, and we wanted to uh, bring just not young women on here, but young men. Again, like I really want to enforce like young men, especially young Black men. We need that more of a reputation in our community because it, it's a stereotype, like they ain't present, but they are especially how young men have mental health issues and they're getting get swept under the rug. So we also bring that to the attention. And also I wanna, I'm not gonna say too much, but I just wanna give y'all a little, you know, a little sneeze up in it. We're gonna have a project coming up called Life After Trauma, because that's what I stress. We have to talk about it. We have survival stories. You have people, you don't know people and that's how you get to know people. Everyone has a story and that's what brings people in. That's how you get to help somebody, that everyone has a story. And some stories are not always meant to be shared. Some stuff just to keep to yourself because some things are sacred, but you never know. Your story can help somebody else's life. But we wanna talk about how child sexual abuse can potentially can turn into human trafficking, but knowing that there is hope after that, knowing that you have people who love you and gonna wrap you around with love, knowing that there is hope that you can achieve your dreams and all the accomplished 
that you can accomplish everything that you put your mind to, that we want to uh, stress that you are born with purpose. So that's what that project is all about. Awesome. Thank you both so much for sharing what you've been working on. Um, so um, now I'd like to dive into some questions specifically um, surrounding human trafficking awareness. Um, and um, this is a conversation. So both of you feel free to, you know, um, talk together as well and bounce some ideas off of each other um, so we don't have to answer anything in any any particular order. Um, so um, I'll just kick things off with the first question. So what is the importance of youth activism in human trafficking awareness? Sure, so I can, I guess I can go first. I think what's really important about youth being active on this issue is that it primarily is affecting youth. So the average age that someone enters um, sex trafficking or even any kind of human trafficking is around the age of 14. Um, and that is really astounding to me when I figured out that statistic, because to think that, you know, people that are, you know, like my cousins or kids that I babysat or even, you know, I'm 24 now and this was a, could only have been 10 years ago for me, um, I think is really, really important that young people are educated on this issue so that they can prevent maybe, you know, their um, you know, schoolmates or, you know, the kids that they're around or even themselves from human trafficking. And then on another point too, I think, you know, now, um, you know, have, having graduated college, I realize the importance of voting and the importance of being active, civically active in your community, and also being part of a group that believes the same things that you do. And so, you know, being part of the youth coalition and being part of philanthropy tank, I think really um, made me more aware about what's going on in my community and what's also going around nationwide. So I think that's kind of a short answer, but I could talk a lot more about why youth activism is so important. I think you pinpointed a whole lot of um, points and youth understand youth. Youth listens to youth. And so when you have adults bring in, you know, a situation or a topic, sometimes youth might not always listen, but they do their own research. They see it. They live where it happens at. So they have questions. And so we have experts who talks to us and then we learn it on our own. And then that's how it starts. That's how it goes on. That, hey, did you hear blah, blah, blah? Oh, you know, in Baltimore, we have a page called Murder in Baltimore. And so they post what happens in Baltimore, how many people got murdered or how any crime that's happening there. And so we see that. And so we talk about it and we want to do something about it. So it's really important that we have that kind of peer to peer connect. And so I really do think the more youth knows about it, the better it would get the attention that it needs to get so we can get the job done to end it. So, and it's going to take, I wish it can end in a day and snap just like that, just with youth and just with people, you know, talking about it and bringing awareness on it, but it doesn't, and it takes the village. And so we are the generation now, so we have to talk about it because, you know, we're going to be making the changes. We are the change. And so that's the importance on how we need youth to understand what human trafficking is and to bring more awareness about it. I love that statement, we are the change. Um, that actually um, ties into the next question that I had, which is how can we as a collective community change the laws and culture surrounding human trafficking? Sure, so I think a big point, and it's some of the activism that I'm involved in, is um, stopping bills that are trying to um, remove provisions for pimping, brothel owning, and sex buying. Um, just because what we know about the sex trade is that the majority of people that are in it are actually not there by choice. They're there under forced fraud or coercion or because of lack of opportunities. And so just recognizing how intimately tied prostitution is with sex trafficking, I think will really change um, a lot of the laws. And then also changing a culture that doesn't commodify um, or objectify bodies, specifically, usually women's bodies and women's, um, you know, like their self-esteem too. So I think it's really important that we change the culture, but then we also have to change the law. And I think also we have to recognize how uh, tied human trafficking is to other kinds of issues like pornography or, you know, sugar dating or all kinds of other things. Um, because without addressing those other things, we can't also address, you know, human trafficking as well. 
Um, and I think also another important point is to recognize how tied it is to other uh, human rights issues like child's rights. That's why we're working on uh, Sarah's law. There's a lot of juvenile justice reform that needs to happen in order for child survivors to actually be able to heal and thrive rather than be criminalized. So this is like a really complex issue, but I think we can really start with you know, educating ourselves about the realities of human trafficking and how tied it is to prostitution, changing laws, changing the culture, and then also reaching out to other kinds of, you know, issues that are working on sort of the same thing uh, that might be tied with sex trafficking or human trafficking. I think she said it all. What can I say after that? I agree with everything you said, Ms. Kaylin. We really have to understand like there's more tied into what human trafficking is that people don't understand or even want to acknowledge that does happen. And once people understand what that is and understand it, and once you change it, there will there can be no change and people just want it how they want it. Or they don't see, well, there's not an issue when there's an issue. So I most definitely agree with you, Miss Caitlin. You said it. You did that. <laughs> yeah, and I think one thing I'm so happy that you're here, Ania, just because like um i recognize how important it is to involve um the black community too and you know there's so many like statistics out there and even stories about how like young girls who are women of color um are being disproportionately impacted by human trafficking and so i think it's so important that you're raising your voice in your own community um and speaking out as well so thank you appreciate you do either of you have any specific examples of youth making a change in human trafficking awareness? I'll let you go first. <laughs> um, ask that question again. It kind of went, it didn't go over my head, but it went over my head. <laughs> yeah, um, so just, um, do you have any specific examples um, that you'd like to share of youth making a change in human trafficking awareness, whether it was within your own program itself or a story that you learned about or any of the individuals that you've worked with? Sure, I can think of one. So um, we became aware of this case of Zephy Trevino. Um, it's similar to the one that I mentioned from Sarah Cruzan. Um, so Zephy was actually being trafficked by her, quote, boyfriend, um, and then there was this encounter that happened. Um, they were all in this house, and uh, Zephy's trafficker actually shot and killed an alleged sex buyer. And so what happened after that is Zephy was arrested and charged with capital murder, even though the trafficker openly admitted to pulling the trigger of the gun. And I think that this just shows how, you know, a lot of the times trafficking victims are caught up in lots of other crimes. They're forced to commit crimes like drug uh, related offenses. And then they're actually caught up in the legal system as well. And the legal system is not set up to protect them. It's instead set up to actually continue to criminalize them. Um, and so what happened after that is Zephy, um, you know, went to jail and um, she was actually certified as an adult. Um, she was 16 actually at the time that the crime was committed. And now she's actually gonna stand trial as an adult and faces life in prison for a crime that she didn't commit and she was also being trafficked at the time. And what's really frustrating about this case is that the trauma that she experienced has not been taken into consideration um, in any of the um, you know, trial, so, or the trial that's to come. So we were actually made aware of this case and we um, created lots of social media advocacy. We actually got two hashtags trending. A Newsweek article came out about the case um, because of the advocacy that we had done. And we worked really closely with Zephy, uh, Zephy's lawyers and some of Zephy's family actually to um, get this case more attention. And I think, you know, maybe Zephy isn't the one that's actually going to be, you know, acquitted of all charges, but it's kind of a start um, raising awareness about this particular case and giving a face and a name to it so that people understand that this isn't just happening to Zephy, it's happening to so many children who are caught up in trafficking and then caught up in a crime that they may or may not have committed. And this is a, an example where Sarah's Law would actually come into place and would actually help um, Zephy. But I think, you know, Zephy really spoke to me because her story is so much like mine. Like she played sports, she was in softball, like she just wanted to be a kid. And then she got caught up in this and, you know, now she's facing life in prison. Um, and so life in prison would completely ruin her life. And we're fighting for Zephy and so many other people um, just like her, so. 
Um, I don't have stories like those. I'm still in the game and I'm here still learning. And there's only still so much that I can do. That's why I'm in college. So I can still get those kind of experiences and work on, you know, work with people like that. I only have, you know, I, I heard stories like that and spoke on and I've been a part of the PAIDS program where I was able to like sit on, you know, laws and I got to testify on one actually. It was really nice. But um, I have to say how one of my, or some of the youth that I do know that is bringing or making a change about human trafficking is by, they still come into meetings to learn about it, how they show up to the awareness events and making a change just by being there because they could be sitting down and playing the game. They could be, you know, outside doing drugs. They could be outside partying and that's fine. Live your life outside of the drugs. But like how they stand up for something that they want to change and that they still want to learn. Like I did, the, I partnered with the Red Sand Project. I had 30 people from my first event and I had like five youth there. Now I have like 30 youth who's coming to me like, what is human trafficking? Like I had a girl who was, um, we just don't, I do a lot just than just human trafficking, but that is my main focus. Like we had a girl and you know how most of the times they don't want to tell us about what they had been through or what you know traumatized them but by me just being the youth of, of my own and how comfortable they are and see the work that I am doing she came to me saying hey this happened to me and I need your help I don't want to keep living in this stereotype like what happens in the house stays in the house I need your help and that's what we got to break that we got to break that what stays in the house stays in the house yes yeah, something should be family private but stuff like that shouldn't and so by you know making that step that's bringing awareness, that's making a change. So that's what I have as of right now. No, I, I loved both of your answers. Um, um, you actually made me think, Ania, I'm, I'm curious, what can someone do or what advice do you have for somebody um, who wants to get more involved on human trafficking awareness issues? How they want to get involved. Hey, just send me a text, you know what I'm saying? You know, follow the page, send me an email. I'm I'm cool. I'm one of y'all, you know, I'm one of you. And so, like, just shoot me an email, shoot me a text. I'm easy, you know. I don't hold nothing back. I don't say no. And that's I don't reject nobody. You want to come work with me? The door's always open. You want to know what human trafficking is? I'll let you know some information. If I don't always have that information, I'm going to send you to somebody who does have that information because I don't know it all. And I'm happy to say I ain't always an expert on everything. So like if you're a youth or you're a young adult or even if you're an adult, because some adults don't even know this is going on. And that's the scary part because they've been living more than I have. And that's the best thing about it. It's, it we don't put an age on it and we shouldn't. And so like how this can, any crime can happen to anybody and anything can happen to anyone. Just like you always have room to grow and you always have a brain full of knowledge. It always has a small little spot that's missing where you can put more knowledge in. So use it. So, you know, I'm really open with people who don't know nothing like, hey, and me, I never heard what human trafficking was. Like that never popped up in my head. I was like, okay, well, I'm having a Zoom meeting, blah, 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 whatever day. I'll send you the link. We're going to have people on there talking about it and we're going to set you up. So like, that's how we do it. Ain't no, you know, ain't nothing too specific and nothing too hard about it. You just have to have an open mind and an open heart and to understand that this happens and this is real life. And it's not easy talking about it. And it's not easy for the people who are talking about it, who have been through it. So like, you always have to have an open heart and an open ear and wanting to learn. So y'all said to keep it in mind. That's a great answer. Thank you, Ania. Um, Caitlin, is there any um, advice or tips that you would give to somebody who's looking to get involved as well? I think I would say, um, you know, take probably everything that you think that you know about human trafficking, like, for example, the movie Taken, or for example, like all these kind of glorified things that you might have seen on TV throw that out the window. And like Ania said, come with an open heart and an open mind and be willing to have your perspectives changed. Cause a lot of the times, like in this work, I've been like, oh my God, I didn't actually think of that. Or, you know, finding out that a lot of the times, you know, family members are actually trafficking their own children or their own other family members. Like 
you have to be able to sort of, you know, check yourself at the door and be able to understand that there's actually really, um, you know, real life things that are happening to people. Um, and also coming into the space with like no judgment, like this might have happened to somebody um, and being really um, aware about how you talk about the issue too. Um, you know, I was actually watching a show yesterday where they were describing um, in New York City and specifically Times Square. And they were actually saying that everyone was a quote sex worker. And I was like, these women are describing being trafficked by their pimps. You know, like it's not this kind of reality that people think like, oh, this is like sexual freedom. No, this is sexual exploitation. Um, so I think that it's really important for young people to be educated about this um, and also be there to heal each other too. Um, Cause this is also a healing space as well. Um, and so I'm really happy to, you know, answer any questions too. Like you can email me, you can text me and you can follow us on Instagram at World We Youth um, to get more involved in our campaigns. And just like Ania said, like attending a Zoom meeting, um, being part of crafting an op-ed or even participating on Twitter, like all of those things add up to be um, bigger things as well and bigger change. Thank you so much. Ania, um, where can we find you on social media? Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Not For Sale Youth Be More. Great, right, thank you. Um, so you both are clearly very educated on the human trafficking space, and you both are very passionate about that. Um, I am curious, you know, tying that back to philanthropy tank, how did we play a role in getting your project to where it is today? I think for me, it was just like somebody believing in me, um, just because when I started Equal and Empowered, it's because I experienced bullying and sexual harassment, um, and the school that I was at actually really didn't take that seriously. And so when I applied to Philanthropy Tank and really got a mentor and actually funding for my project, it was a real source of validation and empowerment for me to um, go out and be an advocate. And so maybe the things that I'm advocating for have changed a little bit. It's still focused on gender and it's still focused on justice, but I think Philanthropy Tank really gave me that platform and set me up for success with confidence and with someone that I now really cherish, um, Julie Fisher Cummings, I continue to work with her every day. Um, and she's an amazing person who's actually guided me and I'm now pursuing a graduate degree because of her as well in social work at Columbia University. So I think it's really like Philanthropy Tank really set me up um, for success. And so I'm, I'm really grateful to, um, you know, everyone who works at Philanthropy Tank, Corey, you, Sarah, I know you're new and also Amy Brand um, because you guys continue to support uh, my work and my projects. So thank you. They helped me and my project just by showing that diversity is needed and, um, and really putting that out there and embracing just me for who I am and believing in my project. And so um, just not with philanthropy team, but with everyone, you know, just everyone who just believed in not for sale. They connected me with mentors. They gave us, you know, it was Zoom meetings that helped us, you know, understand what is this, what is that, what is, uh, how can you become a nonprofit or like, how can you make this into, um, like, if you're going to school, how can you make this, you know, into something bigger than how it already is, how to make it better. And I love Mr. Corey. He's my guy. And like, he really, you know, be pushing me. Like they really push you towards your excellence along with everyone else who supports your organization. So they really did make me better, especially with my self-confidence because at first I was like, mm, I'm a little iffy on that. But like, they really helped me like, no, I need you applied and you got it. We just didn't give you the funds, but we also give you the support that you need for you to really go out there and be your authentic self and do this program. So I'm really grateful for them, like really putting me out there. Great, thank you both so much for, you know, taking the time today to talk about your programs, what you've been working on, what you're really passionate about that. And, um, you know, how Philanthropy Tank has played a role in getting you to where you are and where you continue to go. Um, those are all the questions that I have. I'm not sure if there's anything else that either of you want to discuss um, surrounding human trafficking awareness or your program uh, before we go. I just want to say now I want to work with you, Ania. <laughs> so I think this is a really great space and I'm thankful for Sarah for setting this up just because I got to hear more about your project. And I think um, what we're always looking for with 
World We Youth is to collaborate with other youth organizations. And so we have other organizations that work with us that are um, you know, policy focused or you know, our nonprofits, but we don't have that many youth groups that want to work with us. So I think this could be a great start. So thank you for hey, sharing. It's all love over here. And I'm gladly, and I appreciate you for your support. And I'll be supporting you. I'll be seeing your, uh, the post on Instagram. I'll be learning some new stuff too. Like I saw a campaign on um, like pornography and how it needs like an age limit. And that's a real issue that we do need to talk about. But that's another conversation for a later time because I had some stuff about that. But yeah, I really do appreciate you, Miss Sarah, for, you know, really putting this together and bringing more awareness on what human trafficking is. And thank you, Miss Kaylin, for everything that you do. It does not go unseen. And we really do appreciate the work that you're doing for our young women and bringing this awareness out. So I'm gladly to work with you. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Well, that's everything for me. Um, I will keep you both posted on, um, you know, wh what we're going to be doing with this video. Um, we'll probably be uploading it to, to YouTube and social media, and maybe to our website. So I'll send you any content that we put out there. And then, um, of course, if you can um, reshare it, that would be great. Thank you so much. All right, awesome. Well, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your days or the start of your evening. <laughs> thank you. All right, bye.